Welcome, this is the talk show Guitar Inside. And the idea is pretty simple. We ask two guests and what unites them is the love for the guitar, the most popular instrument, most played instrument in the whole wide world. My wingman is Niels Guns, and we're going international today. Yeah. What are you thinking? Two ladies with a completely different style, uh, very interesting players. Uh, I'm really excited to ask them. Everything. So let me introduce them to you. We have all the way from Finland. Uh, she's the queen of slide guitar. She leads her own blues band and recorded many albums. Her name is Erja Lutinen. And from Wales we have, she plays this finger style technique but brings it, this with a punk attitude. And it's Gwennifer Raymond from Wales. Enjoy. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Gwennifer, Aria, hi. Uh, let's start with, with the sparkly one because that catches m the light catches my eye. <laughs> what did you bring, <laughs> Aria? Everybody always loves these sparkling guitars, don't they? Um, uh, this is an American G&L uh, with me. It's a, a kind of a, looks a bit of like a Telecaster. Uh, um, it's uh, Asad Z3, uh, meaning these three microphones here. And uh, it's kind of a hollow body instrument, halfly. And I've been playing this for, oh my gosh, uh, until I started uh, playing internationally in, in the around 2004 or 5. And uh, so I've been carrying this guitar with me like on all of my international shows. So it's kind of my slide axe. So yes, <laughs> it traveled miles. Yes, and miles. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and so good to have you in the Netherlands back again. Also, yes. Thank you. Yeah, I, I have a question. By the way, the 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 pickups are curved. Does that make a difference in your sound or? I, I think, th well, I assume that these pickups are a bit more stronger than usual, uh, mm. like like typical uh, single coils. So the output is quite. <laughs> It does go to distortion. So it does distort quite easily, and that's yeah. why I also like it because I like playing slide with a lot of, well, distortion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. And then we go for, for, from the sparkly to an acoustic guitar, but sparkly you can intro. shred it. <laughs> 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 what did you bring, Gwennifer? Uh, I brought my Waterloo. Uh, this is a Waterloo WL14L. Um, so they're not super common in Europe. I was actually really lucky to, to find it. I found it second hand um, and they had to get shipped over. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a subsidiary of Collins guitars. I think Collins are better known for making like classical, fancy classical uh, guitars. But yeah, they have a factory in Austin. Uh, Waterloo, they're, they're more of an attempt to build kind of, you know, old pre-war blues style guitars. So this is what this is. I'm guessing it's a copy of probably an old early Gibson or something, like a, you know, LG-1 or something like that. Um, sort of ladder braced inside. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was previously playing a lot of vintage guitars, but then I became terrified of destroying them to a thousand pieces uh, in a plane. So I kind of opted for, <laughs> I think, the best alternative, yeah. which is a modern guitar built to like an old old standard yeah so how does it sound please oh it sounds elaborate <laughs> uh, you know it's kind of got the sort of <laughs> it's just kind of got a big sort of nice. warm I like this guitar yeah and then you both have the uh, that's well, you don't see it every day, and now no. we have two. Uh, wh what do you call those? Uh, finger, finger, just your finger, yeah. finger picks. Yeah. You, I, but you only have one well, on your. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. I just use one in the middle finger and one in my thumb. So I. <laughs> or you wanna do this? Uh, Is it kind of 
kind of like a Travis speaking style with, yeah, with yeah, finger picks. Yeah, yeah, my two so, finger banjo, I But guess. I never yeah, yeah. actually had one in oh, my... Oh, yeah, well, that's you do like, more of that sort of... Yeah, yeah, just to do that. Yeah. That stuff, you yeah, know, kind of travel things. Cool. Yeah, if yeah. I need to do that, I, I try to do it with just with my oh, thumb. Cheat. It's way easier cheating. <laughs> 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 and then how does the thumb feel after playing a whole show? So, it's already going blue. This is pretty <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about earlier before the show that, well, you know, does your fingers get blue after a while we've been playing? Yeah, it does. Yeah. And, and at some point I just noticed, oh my gosh, it's getting blue. But... But we still yeah. we're still playing. Well, it's really <laughs> it's really funny because people. I'm assuming you get the same thing because they are unusual. And people go, well, "How'd you wear them?" And like, yeah. I tried them, but I can't I can't get them on right. It was like, if it's not hurting, you're not doing it right. <laughs> you're <just> in <laughs> absolute agony, <laughs> and now you're wearing them correctly. It's, it's funny we had Tommy Emmanuel here a couple of episodes ago. He also had, had his guitar, a scratched guitar, and yeah. it starts over there as well, right? Yeah, it's. Yeah, just the outside of the pick guard. I'm sure I've had guitars without pick guards and they kind of get a hole around there. Oh, um, yeah. So, you know, getting a pick guard. Well, that's character bu building, right? I, uh, I'm not sure what it does to the tone when I go up and this starts to go about this big, but you know. <laughs> Well, it's the other guitar that you did bring. So this yeah. is the, the, the live baby, actually. The live baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other one is it's, uh, it's a Finnish guitar made in Finland uh, by Ruokangas. And uh, this was kind of a, like a prototype. Uh, Juha Ruokangas, he said to me, like, try that one. And, and um, it was quite like unfinished in a way, but, but I Im immediately liked it very much. And, and the, the neck is, is quite... Um, Petite, small for my hand, and and it kind of um, widened my playing style. So uh, I've played a lot of solos on my latest al album, Waiting for the Daylight, uh, by using this guitar. And uh, this I use particularly when I play in a normal tuning. Like uh, this guitar is in open D, but I also play in open G and open C tunings. And uh, so it's a, <laughs> a lot of going on all the time. But with with this one, I play like normal standard guitar and uh, the neck is it's it's lovely so mm. it's nice to do some it stuff fits. with it yeah, yeah. okay good uh, one uh, more uh, uh, just uh, how do you say it an announcement could you remove that earring area as oh. well because <laughs> from the <laughs> microphone it, it does add an acoustic <laughs> element oh. <laughs> it's like percussive <laughs> sound yeah, all indeed. the time <laughs> I'm so playing percussive okay yeah, so here we go <laughs> yay we've, we've covered it, it that. is a pick by the way yeah it's oh. it's a pick points, earring points for the for the <laughs> earrings as well um, well you uh, can yeah. now just uh, perform with, with this album you recorded it last year yeah or it came also yeah, out in 2022 it came out in October last year yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, that was uh, that was really cool to record that album, and that put a lot of uh, I I feelings and expressions. And and, uh, and the pandemic time, I put a lot of that frustration to this album, and uh, and I'm really satisfied with it, how it came out, with with from from the from the songs all the way to the cover art, which is yeah. done by uh, artificial Amazing. intelligence. And hey. so I uh, know it's it looks it's, it's good not on the you. It looks thing, good yeah. on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She still has no, um, four fingers because that's what the mid journey sometimes does. You know, it does yeah, add yeah. some yeah. extra things as well. Yeah. Uh, did you record it in a different style? Do you want to push yourself as an artist when you make new songs and try yeah. something new? With with all of my albums, I always try to do that. But with this one, I think I really, really pushed myself. Really further uh, i was you know practicing a lot of guitar during the pandemic and trying to do things differently and um, and so w while i was recording the solos I, I didn't just play my regular things you know i tried to do something different and just push myself to do something different and uh, also technique wise can you, can yeah, you name yeah. an, uh, an example um, um play an example yeah, yeah. <laughs> Robert, yeah. <laughs> well um well, with the slide, um, I, I was trying to not to play the maybe just the uh, the regular uh, French, but trying to play like out, out outside of them in some of the solos and such. Mm -hmm. And uh, we with the regular guitar, um, what what did I have there? Like like fast like triplets and 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 rhythmical stuff. A lot of rhythmical stuff and yeah. Yeah. There's, there's one particular solo that, that got 
on the record. The first yeah. one. Got nominated yeah. as one of the best solos by Guitar Player magazine, Guitar Me magazine, one of them. Yeah. One of the big magazines. Um, um, that's a special solo, right? Can, can, can you play it? Oh, can I play it now? <laughs> 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 well, um, the, so the solo, um, there's actually like two guitars playing simultaneously. Okay. And it's in, oh yeah, I cannot do that right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unless Gwen <laughs> help me. But um, so it's in G, and the song is uh, Nils' song. Bad about Seed. Yeah. Bad Seed. Yeah. And uh, so um, I had my guitar in open G uh, when I was playing the slide. And, and uh, when I was playing uh, regular guitar, I just played uh, this guitar and uh, maybe some stuff what I did there. I have this Hindu, Hindu scale I used in some point, you know, because I like kind of very melodic stuff. So, um, so there's this place when I do. So kind of a, that's kind of a, a ethnical, uh, ethnic mm -hmm. sound to it. And, and um, the solo starts with the regular guitar. Like <laughs> slide coming on top of mm. that so it's like two guitar solos going simultaneously together like in the sun it's like old lovers playing in a field or something okay, like that okay, okay. <laughs> cool. so well, for your latest uh, album uh, pandemic you uh, uh, kind of were stuck uh, in your bedroom <laughs> I was <laughs> and very was happy you still <laughs> <laughs> it was a uh, it was a bedroom album I had yeah. to wait for the upstairs neighbors uh, washing machine to uh, <laughs> turn off I wish I was joking, but that is, that is a true fact. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, I wrote it, it, it was written pre-pandemic. It was, I was kind of ready to go into a studio to record it. Um, I recorded my previous album again at home, another home recording. But I was like, all right, I'll do this one a bit more proper. Got a studio figured out. I'm going to go, oh, every, I can't leave the house. Uh, so I kind of spent that money on microphones. And I'm quite, I, I'm kind of glad for it because it's, I guess double down my interest in recording. I think I don't think I'm gonna. Even if I bother going into a studio, I'm gonna record myself from now right. on. I kind of. I think there's, there's also something nice about not having someone there, sort of looking at their watch when you're trying to yeah. when you're trying to play, like kind of mentally to, to go. All right, if I have to I have to play this, you know, 20 times to get it right, I can, but I never do. Right, it's always one of one of one or second take. Um, but psychologically, I think I think it, it helps. I know, yeah, I'm just too lazy to do more than 20 takes, but I want the option, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. So, and then you're, you're recording, and then uh, the songs are very, uh, well, I, I see a movie when I'm listening to your latest album. It has so many layers, and it tells stories. Every song tells a story, even though it's just, uh, you sing also, but yours is instrumental. How, how, do, how do these songs progress and, and take shape? Yeah, I mean, the tech, the, to be honest, I'm, I'm a very slow writer. Um, but it was before I wrote that, before that, did that album. I wrote this sort of, this track um, called "The Three Deaths of Red Spectre," and it was originally written as a, uh, as, it was like a, a like a live accompaniment piece for this. There was a silent, silent French film called "The Red Spectre," and it was a whole evening of various artists in Brighton doing a, doing these live accompaniments. So I wrote the original sort of concept of that track for that. It was more improvised. But then it solidified into this thing. But prior to that, I guess I'd been doing more kind of almost like folk or more punk pop, you know, same thing, kind of standard A, B, A, B, middle A, A, B, B, you know, whatever, uh, style strong structures. But because I had to write it for a film, it naturally followed the film. And it had this more like comp kind of traditional compositional thing with movements and stuff. And I just immediately found that so much more interesting. Uh, so that whole album then kind of tend to follow more in that course of things of trying to take a song rather than, you know, it, they're all still riffs, like I think all of the, you know, everything for me is, is about a good riff, but I think cl you know, classical music is largely about great riffs. If you think about it, you're, you're humming like Beethoven, he's just a, he's a good riff, man. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of it. Um, yeah. uh, so, so how, how just, does it yeah. go? Just uh, Red Spectre, well, it's got a lot of bits to it. Uh, yeah. I think it's about nine minutes long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, sort of like, beautiful sort of bits. Yeah. Kind of intro, intro, like it's got like a... <laughs> And 
it's gone, but it's got something on it. Play the whole, it's impossible Dynamics to play the whole song. Dynamics as well, you know? yes, yeah. yes, yes. And then playing live, that's a, a different kind of beast, of course, and there, there's some madness in touring sometimes, right? You, you want to perform your songs live, I think, but then it can also be exhausting to be on, on tour. How is that for you, Aria? Uh, well, you just have to cope with it, you know. I, you know, I woke up this morning, I wrote, da-da-da-da-da, <laughs> <laughs> 5 a.m. to catch my plane to come to Eindhoven to play a show, and... You know, then you just have to you have to deliver with sleep or with sleep without sleep. You know, yeah. it's it's just like that. And maybe you kind of get used to that as well. So, but but you also have to what, what I try to do warm up before the show. So even if you're tired or not, it's good that you're in a, you know ready to run, so to yeah. speak. So both for you two, Jennifer. Also, you have to perform tonight at the Knopje and then still. Warm up. Yeah, a yeah. bit of a warm up. You, you, you try, obviously, you can't always. Sometimes it's like someone kicks you up the ass and throws you on stage. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, I'm trying to sort try and just kind of, you know, just sort of. I do a lot of this, right? Yeah. <laughs> For like eight hours, and then it's just, you just try and not think about it too hard. <laughs> well, memorable shows. I want to go to you, Aria, because you played with the one and only Carlos Santana. Hello, Mensa. Yeah, I mean. Wow, <laughs> yeah. uh, you you could open for him. You were his support act in Helsinki, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then what happened that day? Uh, miracles. <laughs> <laughs> miracles. Over there, there you are. I know. Yeah, <laughs> that was amazing day. Really, there was twenty thousand people in Guys Anime Park in Helsinki city center, and uh, we were supporting Carlos and his nice band. And he watched my show and and then came to talk to me after the show, and uh, we hang out at the backstage and. And I was invited on stage with him, just you know, play with <laughs> this incredible band, and yeah, it was a joy. You can see me. Like, it's oh, a yeah. nice voice. Yeah. Like, take this, Carlos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Did yeah. Bring this? <laughs> oh, oh. It was so much fun, and, and uh, yeah, it, it definitely had a huge impact on me because you know, I started to play guitar when I was, when I was around 14 or 15 years old. And I remember when I started to, uh, practicing the solos, practicing the blues pentatonic scales, minor pentatonic scales. And, and uh, I remember Santana's music was brilliant for practicing you know, Dorian, Dorian scale and, and minor blues scale on top of those mm -hmm. chord progressions, you know. <laughs> So nice to play on top of that. So, yeah, and uh, so for me, it, it was kind of like uh, the whole thing came on a the full circle. circle. Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then for you, you uh, you said, Jen uh, Guinevere, sometimes it's nice to have a rowdy crowd because people think, oh, there's a girl with an acoustic guitar. It's <laughs> gonna be a quiet <laughs> evening. <Yeah. laughs> oh, it's not, is it? <laughs> yeah, I th I'm just, yeah, I, I, I like both, but there's a certain joy I have found because, yeah, I play very serious guitar and you have very serious audiences who kind of, oh, yes. Yeah. You know, kind of, which is great. I mean, it's it's probably what I'm like as an audience member. To be honest, I go, oh, yeah, it's really good. They really quietly applaud and like super into it. Mm -hmm. But there's something great about I don't know playing some sometimes playing a really really loud festival where everyone's absolutely hammered, <laughs> shouting over your set and somehow winning them over to your side with an acoustic. You know, it's not party music by any stretch of the imagination, right? Yep. So it's it's I don't know. Those are my favorite gigs. Is like somehow winning someone over. To, yes. my, to the dark side of being a <laughs> solo instrumental guitar player. But did, it, so yeah. did somebody win you over like that as well for to get to this style? Um, well, I mean, I, I, I started out in, in, in punk bands. I sort of started, yeah, started playing guitar when I was eight. I just started as a drummer. I was a 14-year-old punk drummer playing around the valleys. Um, 
but it, I was just for me. I think that the I think it's a really common story, but the the as it affected a lot of people. But that you know MTV Nirvana unplugged album where he plays that Lead, Lead Belly track, I'm like ooh, that's that's super nice. Let me listen to some Lead Belly. Let me find you know, and you got Mississippi John Hurt and Skip James and kind of go into more the you know Doc Boggs, Waska Holcomb kind of that more Appalachian stuff. And it's a started to wanted to learn to play that technique because I always thought there was multiple guitar players on a lot yeah. of those tracks, but mm. this is John Hurt tracks. So when I discovered it's 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 one man, I'm like shit. Okay, I'm gonna mm. I'm gonna learn how to play that. Uh, found a blues teacher in Cardiff where I was living, and he played me a John Fay track that I'd never heard of. Mm. Um, and I had been writing these little. I can't sing even a single note. It is truly awful. Um, but I'd been writing these little blues compositions for myself, and I was quite pleased with them, but I thought, no one else is going to want to hear this bloody acoustic guitar solo on its own. And then, oh, apparently, this is this is guy called John Fay who invented this entire genre of American primitive music. So, you know, kind of went That must have there. been a... Uh, yeah, can you tell how that felt? Like, that's somebody you... John Fay was quite important to you, right? I guess super right? important. Yeah, I mean, I still, I still think um, he. I, it's kind of almost a cliche, but I still think he is like of all the kind of guitar solo artists, he's still my absolute favorite. I still think he's the best. Um, it's something about even when he's playing quite simplistic uh, things. There's some. Uh, there's like a dark. Mm. I don't know. You can really sense his, his kind of weird presence in in the music. It's really interesting, actually. I just read um, Steve Lowenthal's biography on him, and. He hated the folk revival stuff. He hated hippies. He hated all of that stuff. And the only time when he really felt like he kind of found his true audience was in the 90s when guys like the Thurston Moore like, and, yeah. and all those guys, he got, apparently he would like listen to Merzbo late at night and kind of crazy Japanese noise. So the fact that I came from it myself from more that scene, it, I, it, it, all of a sudden it kind of made, it made sense to me. Yeah. What's a typical John Fay thing that you think? Oh, I still love playing it. Uh, I guess. I mean, I mean, I'm in diamonds, but wine and roses. But he has that. I mean, it's just that really simple. But it's mm. this is nice. <laughs> yeah, that dark, that darkness. Yeah, I feel yeah. it, right? It's yeah. minor, minor tuning. You have. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's so it, definitely it's a part nice. of it. Lovely. I think they, they, there's a match uh, with uh, that. I'm, I'm seeing it. <laughs> can I, can I join, join in?
met 45 minutes ago, yes. right? So that's that's the spirit of the, this festival, I guess, as well, right? The love for yeah, I two good guitar it, players together, and if this happens, it's... Well, it's very interesting to hear that you've been, you know, really digging into Delta blues guitar yeah, players, because that's you what were I've like been nodding doing like well. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like, you know, Marty Waters and Elmore James. That, yeah. and but isn't it magic if that happens, right? If you you met, meet somebody, don't know each other, and you have this common language, you know, which is Music is universal. It's Although it's two it different styles. All the, it's yeah, genre. Uh, all the boundaries, really. So. Goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you're called Queen of Slide Guitar. Is it sometimes that you think, well, uh, I'm happy with uh, with the nickname, or is it sometimes just wearing my crown, like a, <laughs> like, <No>. like a <laughs> burden, <laughs> having a cup of tea and wearing yeah. my crown? Well, it's just you know, well, it's media. You know, people write stuff, and uh, I just genuinely enjoy playing slide guitar. It's something I don't never really know where I'm going with it. It's so inspirational to play slide, and, and um, like you probably noticed, I like to use a lot of different effects at the same token. So yeah, spicing you two, up you, my you playing. Brought with you your two pedal boards, right? Yeah, yeah. just I brought a couple of pedals with <laughs> me. It's like <laughs> it's, they weigh uh, 23 kilos. Poor Ooh. Ola. <laughs> <laughs> so so my tech has to carry these around Europe. But yeah, so for me, slide is it's something. It's mystical. It's fascinating. I it's didn't you, it's learn like that. It's a human in voice, school. almost, right? Like it is a human voice, and I never really got any teaching to it, like, like an education for it. But, but I did had an education for playing regular guitar, you know, all kinds of stuff. But with this one, it's like there's no boundaries. Just go by, play by the ear. Mm. Is that World. what you do? Yeah, to Gwennifer also play by ear, see wh where it goes, try to oh, totally think out yeah. of the construct? I have absolutely no musical education beyond, like I said, like a couple of basic guitar lessons. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I've, I just, I, I, have this, I, I always like to play the note that sounds the, the worst sometimes. I don't know if you have a similar thing, that's that design, yeah. you know, natural. It, go. That's, that's the one yeah, I that's like. That's interesting. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's about as fancy as it gets, though. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, you have the whole uh, the, the songbook. There's no Gwennifer uh, uh, Raymond songbook Absolutely yet. Absolutely not. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Couldn't do. Well, do both you? women, of course. In uh, um, maybe well, there are a lot of women who play guitar as well. But but sometimes you you I have the idea you see more men playing guitar. You sometimes have to feel like I have to fight for my spot to own it or to prove myself. How does it feel for you? Well, right. maybe in the beginning it was like I started to play guitar. Oh my God, can I say this aloud? Thirty years ago, so you're thirty-one. <laughs> <laughs> I was one year old <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> back then, but times were different then. There were there were a lot of men playing in the band bands, and and uh, there weren't too many women playing guitar. And of course, there were Rory Block and Bonnie Raitt and. Sue Foley and all these amazing guitar players. But nowadays, you go to Instagram or YouTube, there's a lot of female who play guitar. And, and what I heard, uh, based on the researchers nowadays, it's more women who are the first buyers of, of um, electric guitars. Yes. You know, so the women are buying more It's a shift, uh, yeah. So it's changed. Yeah. yeah. Guys, we're taking it <laughs> over. Yeah. yeah, I think all the men are DJs now. I think this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> they can play background yeah, music for us. The and we can solo. No. <laughs> but I think it's just rich that the, the, there are a lot more women coming to this whole genre and runs and, and playing guitar. I think it's Is great. it important to have a female example as well then? Like of course, of course. And uh, you know that will give more courage for the younger mm -hmm. girls. Uh, and hey, I, I could do that as well. So, of course, yeah. Like, like was, um, can you name uh, a female guitar player that has inspired you recently? Well, Bonnie Raitt, oh for yeah. sure, mm -hmm. back in the days, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, she is an amazing slide guitar player. And uh, yeah, and it, when I first heard about her, I was like, wow, who is this lady mm -hmm. playing slide guitar and doing her own songs? and and she's a great singer as well, so yeah. 
and she has had a really amazing career. So. There was an article in New York Times, you were featured in that as well, about this topic actually, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And there is indeed a shift, shift going on, right? So yeah, definitely. I mean, it's strange. I mean, especially with this genre, it's, just a, it's, a, it's a genre of, of, of strange people anyway, right? So I don't think it's going <laughs> to necessarily be representative of the, of the general public. But certainly there's, uh, yeah, I think there's, I mean, it's, it's, and it's just natural, right? If if you see it's just something that increase. If you see people playing it, you're going, oh, I could do that, rather than be kind of dissuaded by the complete absence of, of representation. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, I mean, who knows? Really, I don't know. I don't have the numbers. Uh, I, I'm just, I just want to play guitar. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The universal language. Um, working on anything new at the moment that that you sometimes think, oh, now there's something bubbling in my head, and I'm. Guessing it's gonna be a song someday. Does does the creative process always go on and on? Yeah, yeah. Starting with you. Well, it do, it does actually. Um, not long ago, I, I sang songs into my telephone like, oh, I need to sing this, and uh, this could be a song. <laughs> uh, or sometimes you come up with a riff or something, and then you just need to record it quickly. Otherwise, you might forget it, and then it's out of the window, and you know. So it's it is yeah. But I am not in that stage where I'm going to studio or, or no. uh, to record any stuff yet. But because it's it's it requires so much of concentration, then you need to have that time period of really recording your yeah. ideas. And, and there's a band also. Yeah, yeah. There, you need to add drums. You're you're the one man band, <laughs> the one woman band, <laughs> so to say. It's a lot cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm 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 slow writer. I tend to kind of have so bits and book bobs which assemble into songs. Uh, some not not always. Like, uh, is this one song on my last album, uh, Eulogy for Dead French Composer, uh, which <laughs> I Sati, right? Sati, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I did. That one came out like immediately. I think I wrote that song in about five minutes. The song was about five minutes. So it was <laughs> oh okay cool. I'll, I'll keep that. And um, but no, but usually it's 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 slow. Uh, so I am I am I am. Currently writing, but uh, I'm, uh, I sort of I'm still I'm not quite a full-time musician yet. I'm sort of working a full-time job, so th it's also the sort of added. You, you're, a, you're a video uh, game video. programmer, right? I am, yeah. It's so, so that's all why you're a slow writer. Techniques, <laughs> so just technicalities. Like, yeah, yeah. I, whatever. This is Sarah. I hate I hate computers. Honestly, it's like my brain <laughs> <laughs> separates at home. Uh, but yeah, I'm just you know, it's just, it's just a slow process, isn't it? You can't you can't force it, right? No. Mm. Just make a really bad album. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can make time, maybe, right? To say oh, I'm, I'm off for a month, uh, well, or, or that's, doesn't that work for, for you? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's for gigging. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, but, yeah. but but uh, for writing, it doesn't work like that. No, nah, you just gotta. I just sit down, you just write, and you just gotta. Mm. I think, no, oh, something will come out, or it, or it doesn't. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I think that's just. I mean, maybe some people. I know some people might have more. I, I'm going to write this song. It doesn't work for me. I don't know how you do well, it. No. You know, it's for getting the inspiration for for mm. some mood for for a mood or or a song, it, it requires kind of a space around you. And uh, then when you finally have the bit, bits and pieces, then you start really kind of putting it all together. Then it's work, work, work. You may think about how you would like this song to be, and then you you know you think of more of the production side of the song. That's the way I mm. actually. Yeah. Uh, at That's least right. think about yeah, and then tell us uh, about the band you work with. Uh, I have a four-piece band, so there's a drummer and a bass player and a keyboard player, and it's a lot of fun. It's gonna be fun tonight. And then For is sure. it w when you make music and when you record? Is it the same crew or do you have some sort of a wrecking crew to do the studio things? I, I usually have the same same crew with me, and uh, yeah, so. If there's benefits on it because then you're really solid tight group on s stage and also in the studio. So while recording that album, it was it was really really like pure joy. Yeah, it it, it was it w went so smoothly with guys. So it was nice experience. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe next album too soon. <laughs> yeah, Coming up, well, just, <laughs> just came out in the songbook uh, as well. Um, well, some music again would be yeah, good. right. Is it I okay to how well? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Uh, are you, are you up for it for another collab sure. or just one thing? Just do it. Know. Keep it in D. Yeah. Do you want to do one? Do you want to do another tune? <laughs> can you go to C? Once in a lifetime. This one. Yeah. You we see? can go to C. I like C. Yeah. So I can do it like this. Such a one-off. Yeah. 
let's see now. Easy All right, good. Yeah, it's easy. Pedals. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do we major. We can do minor as well. <laughs> yeah. I'll put it in major, I'll be nice. It's <laughs> not, not a cheerful person. <laughs> Thank you. 
snares kept up because you I think you eat snares probably <laughs> <laughs> they break a lot I think oh You're, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah about one set a gig yeah. <laughs> yeah at least well so thank you so much for coming over for uh, being our guest for this uh, uh, guitar inside we, we talk guitar we listen to uh, to the guitar and uh, have good gigs in Eindhoven as well and uh, well all the best for the future as well. So we have Gwennifer Raymond, Eja Lutinen, and thank you for joining us. Thank and uh, thank you. see thank you again next time, bridgefestival.com. Thank you.